Hi, I'm Gary Edelman, Chief Historian at the American Battlefield Trust, and this is History at Home. I'm so happy to be here talking about my favorite subject, Civil War photography. The Civil War was fought from 1861 to 1865, and it's the first war that is largely photographed, and in so many ways, Civil War photographers were way ahead of us. More than 150 years ago, they were making 3D photographs. They were staging their photographs to maximize subscriptions. They were using what we would call clickbait. They were tagging their photos sort of the ways that we do so it's worth another examination indeed civil war photography has gone viral again By the time the Civil War started in 1861, photographers had made leaps and bounds in making photography more accessible to the public. Let me explain how that worked. This was the wet plate process. It really proliferated in the 1850s, and it involved taking a sticky chemical called collodion and pouring it onto a glass plate, okay? And once you pour that on there, the collodion sort of formed a film. That's the film for the camera at the time. Taking it to a light-proof box, they would sensitize it to light, and then they would keep it in a light proof box while they set up their scene with their camera. Their camera was essentially a wooden box with a high quality lens on the end of it. They would set up the whole scene. Once they had it all ready to go, they would take that carrier over from the light proof box over to the camera, slide it in, and when the subject was ready, they simply removed the lens cap from the camera. That was the shutter. And then they would put the lens cap back on, make it light proof again, carry it over to the light proof box, and develop it right on the spot. And if they were lucky, if it came out really well, if they were really good at what they did, they would end up with a photograph on a glass plate. It looks like what we would call a negative right now, but if you put it up against a black background, it suddenly became a positive image. That is called an ambrotype. But more importantly, you could take that glass plate and put it in the sun against some light sensitive paper. We called it albumin paper, maybe. And you put it in the sun for five or 10 minutes and you would have an image burned onto that piece of paper. And then you could do it again with a new piece of paper. And again and again, you could make thousands of prints from one glass plate negative. There were thousands of photographers taking photos inside their studios in towns and cities across the country, but only a handful, maybe a few dozen, actually left their studios and went out to battlefields, went to follow the armies to document the Civil War. And that was an extraordinarily complex process. They needed to bring all of their complex photochemicals with them. They needed the fragile glass plates. They had to be in a war zone, and they had to have it all together in one wagon, and they slept in and around that wagon as well. The soldiers thought the wagons looked weird, so they called them white what is it wagons or what's it wagons? For four years, the photographers followed armies around, went into camps and hospitals, and even into prisons and recorded as many pictures as they could. We're talking about 10,000 outdoor documentary photos taken during the Civil War. And incredibly, more than three quarters of the photos taken during the Civil War on battlefields, camps, prisons, and hospitals were actually taken in 3D. That's right, they were taken as if that's the only way anybody would ever see them. And those photos would be mounted on cards. You may have seen them before in your parents' or grandparents' uh, parlors and put into a special viewer, and you could actually see faraway places in 3D. This is how people traveled the world back then. You couldn't easily hop on a boat, let alone a plane during the Civil War, and go across the ocean and see the pyramids of Egypt. Well, using stereo photography, you could at least see what it looked like. It was the virtual reality of its day. Photographers could also take their photos, the particularly newsworthy ones, hand them to an artist who could convert them into an engraving or a woodcut. And these could actually be printed in newspapers or magazines of the day. And in that way, a photographer could take a particularly interesting photo one day, um, print the photo the next day, and then have it engraved a week later. And within a month, a million people could see it in Harper's Weekly or some other publication. It's also important to note that Civil War photographers actually captured photos of distant combat during the Civil War. They captured scores of pictures of people smiling in Civil War pictures, not something you usually see unless you zoom in. And by the way, the photos recorded by these photographers back then were much better than the resolution on your best digital cameras. Check which digital cameras you have in your house. Find your photography friend and see if they can, from 15 feet away, zoom into a photo and see the cracks and lines on someone's hands. Can they see the fingerprints of somebody 15 feet away? If they can't, well then they can't touch the resolution on good solid Civil War photographs. 
And one of the biggest myths about the Civil War is that somehow all those glass plates I mentioned at the beginning aren't there anymore because they all burned up in the nation's greenhouses. And that's just not true. The original documentary Civil War photographs were actually put into catalogs and we can compare those catalogs to the glass plates at places like the Library of Congress, the National Archives, and the Smithsonian Institution. So we know the glass plates are still there and we are lucky for it because we use them all the time. We can actually use these Civil War photographs to help understand the past better. Was that a fence there? Was there a rock wall? Were there woods here at the time? And it can help us to better rehabilitate and understand our battlefields. Those battlefields that are so important to us today, the Civil War photographs help us know what they look like and what the troops went through while they were there. I encourage anybody watching this video to go to LOC.gov and search through their incredible collection of Civil War images. And I think no matter what, you're going to find something that is interesting to you. And I think you're going to learn a little bit more about the Civil War, about American history, and maybe about the world around you today.